Hi everybody. Okay, in this uh, first lesson we're talking about uh, very introductory concepts, most of which you've probably covered already. Uh, I want to go over one thing, that's the client-server model. Uh, the client-server model is really important to understand how a web page is requested from a web server, uh, where the code runs. So uh, in this diagram we have a client. This would be uh, your, your machine uh, hooked up to your home internet connection. It could be your phone or a tablet uh, connected to a Wi-Fi connection or a cell tower. Um, one thing about web, web development is we now have so many different types of, of uh, browsers connecting to our websites that we really need to be concerned with uh, cross-browser compatibility. I think most uh, browser uh, the developers of the browsers have done a pretty good job of incorporating most of the HTML5 uh, suite into it. So what we're going to learn this semester is pretty standard and will be cross-browser compatible. Um, so the, the way it works is our, when we type in a web request or post a web form, it makes an HTTP request, that's the protocol it uses, uh, or HTTPS and it's going to send a request up to a, a server which processes that request using the URL or the URI that we send. So something like HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com would go to a specific web server. And then the rest of that path determines which file it grabs from the web server and sends back in the uh, response. And the response that it's going to send back consists of HTML code, uh, CSS, uh, and JavaScript. Let's look at the next slide here. So here's a little more uh, detailed client-server model on a web application. Uh, sometimes that HTTP request is a, is a uh, server-side page that we server-side code that we're requesting. So on the web server, uh, it could be a single server, it could be multiple servers. And we could be running something like ASP.NET, PHP, Python, Perl, and it would dynamically create uh, the response. So, for instance, if we were connected to MyTriC space and you're grabbing your course schedule, you're going to pass your S number and a URI that says grab my course schedule, and then maybe there's some dynamic code that runs on a server, and it's going to grab all of your course records from a database. You know, by saying something like select all courses where S number equals and whatever your S number is. And then it, what it does is it's going to create uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript response and send that back to the client. Now, the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are not compiled languages. They're interpreted languages. So when it gets to the browser, it the browser has all of the code that you've sent. Not the server-side code, but the client-side code is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And that's what we're learning this semester. We're learning just the client-side code. Um, so you can actually go to any web page and view the source for the web page. And you can see the HTML. You could get to the CSS if you wanted to. Uh, so here's all, all kinds of HTML code. This is actually the code for the uh, web page to be rendered. So that's what we're learning. Uh, we're learning it's not a compiled language. Uh, I wanted to show you this tutorial. I, I intentionally make lesson one slimmed down because I know a lot of you are still getting the book, uh, getting into Blackboard for the first time. Um, I want you to be able to post an assignment. And most of all, I want you to get to get a handle on the IDE that you're going to use. What what tool are you going to use to develop web pages? And uh, the tool that I use right now is Visual Studio Code. This is not Visual Studio. Visual Studio is a uh, you know the main development platform for server side code um, using .NET Core and Visual Studio, in Visual Studio, you can create a project and it'll create uh, initial files for your project. Um, and it manages the project through uh, Visual Studio uh, 
project file and a solutions file. Um, Visual Studio Code is, think of like a notepad or a text edit. It is a really generic text editor, but it just has a lot of features that you can add on through extensions. Um, but, but primarily, we're just editing text. So in Visual Studio, it's a little different. Instead of, instead of uh, opening a project, we're just going to open a folder. So what I would do for your project is I, for your projects for this class, is I would create a folder called IT1150 or something similar to it. And you'll put all of your source code for this class into that folder. So I have a folder called IT1150 and I've created a folder called Lab1 and a folder called Demo1. Now, it's up to you. You could directly open up one of these folders and then in Visual Studio Code, you'll only see the files associated with Lab1. <coughs> Excuse me. Or you could open up the 1150 folder and you'll what you'll see is a list of all of the folders. And then you could, from this screen, just open up recent and it'll just open up the correct folder every time. So let me go ahead and open up, I'm gonna browse to it. Actually, you can uh, open folder and browse it. I'll just click on recent. So this is the 1150 folder. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so now we have this uh, demo and lab folders accessible to us. And uh, for lab one, note that I have extracted the files from the zip file. You need to extract the files from the zip file before you start the lab. Anytime you're downloading a zip file, you can't work from the zip file. You have to actually uh, take an extra step and copy those files or um, put them into a, another working folder. You can't work from the zip file itself. Okay, so two areas here. This, this bottom list shows the open folder and all the contents in that folder. Above it, you'll see open editors, and open editors is gonna list any files that are open in the editor area. That's this area of the IDE. So right now there's a welcome page. I, if I close that, now there are no files open. If I wanna create a file inside of demo one, left click it one time and then create file or create folder to create it inside of demo one if i want to create a folder or file in the root of the folder that i've opened or the root of it 1150 click in the open space below the folder so i'm going to click right here one time notice how it highlights a box around the entire list now if i create a folder so i'll call it lab2 Notice it creates it in the 1150 folder. And so whenever you create a new lab, click into the open space first. Okay, let's go into demo, and I'm gonna add a new HTML file. So I'm gonna say new file, click that one time, and I'm gonna uh, use the name index.html. So now index.html is open in the editor window. You can see the tab, and you can switch between files using tabs. Uh, you'll also see it listed under open editor, so don't be confused. This is a separate list from your folder list. All right, let's create a basic HTML page. So first we'll put doc type HTML. Doc type means document type. Uh, you need to use this format, less than exclamation mark and a greater than sign at the end. Don't put any extra spaces in there. And HTML means HTML5 is the latest standard of HTML. Uh, then we're going to wrap the entire page inside, or the whole document, I guess, inside of an HTML tag or an HTML element. So let's talk about what, what is a tag versus an element. Well, we have an open tag and a closed tag with the same name. You'll notice there's only one difference in the closed tag. It's got that forward slash. And all the way from the beginning of the open tag to the end of the close tag is considered an HTML element. Okay, and HTML is a markup language. The way that we write code with markup languages is to surround, uh, surround 
information with these tags. So inside of the HTML element, we, we traditionally have two elements. We have the head element and the body element. So the head element contains meta information or metadata about our project. For instance, we could have a title element, and this, this is going to This is going to display a title in the tab or the title bar when we open our web page. And inside the body, I'll just put our traditional hello world. Okay, so I'm going to save it now. Let's say file, save. And you could say reveal in finder or copy path if you want. I, I like to uh, right click and select copy path. And then in your browser window, open a new tab and paste in that path. And this is the web page that we've created. Now, remember, it's not a compiled language, it's an interpreted language. So if I right click on it and say view page source, you can see the source code that we just wrote. Notice that in the title bar, it says demo for IT 1150. And that's because we have a title element that says demo for IT 1150. Notice the output there, hello world. Now you have to be exact. These cannot be misspelled. You can't forget a close uh, greater than sign. You have, to, you have to be careful not to close the element, then have content and another close. They need to match. We also need to be concerned with what's called nesting in HTML. So nesting means if you open an element, you should close it in the correct order. So here we go, we have an HTML element, we opened it, then we opened the body element. So in, in order to have proper nesting, we have to close body first because it falls inside of the HTML element. So because we've closed HTML, now the closed body falls outside of that HTML tag. So we have improper nesting. So make sure you have to close the last opened tag or the, to create an element. Okay, so there's a really basic web page. Now, in web development, you don't have to compile stuff. Uh, it's just rendered in the browser, and that's the browser interpreting and displaying the HTML. So if I change this to hello IT 1150, and save it. I'm going to use the shortcut Command S and Windows. You'd use Control S, and then I'm going to toggle over to the web page and refresh it, and you see that it updates. I don't need to close the web page and open it up again. You just need to go back to the web page and refresh it, and then you're good to go. Okay, so that's a simple web page. I want to show you a resource. I know I mentioned I keep that first week really basic uh, in terms of technology, but in future weeks I'll reference a lot of online resources and the primary one is W3 Schools. I, I really like um, I really like W3 Schools because it is the most simple um, way to learn HTML in my opinion. It goes over all of the most important elements to learn. Uh, it also has a, a great tutorial on CSS that we'll use and JavaScript as well. This to me is the best resource out there. Uh, so let me just go over the first few uh, pages of W3Schools. First of all, I went to w3schools.com slash html. So you can see it's got an introduction to HTML. What I love about W3Schools, though, is if there's a topic that you want to learn about, you can click this Try It Yourself button, and it takes the example that they've shown on the page, and it displays the code. So like what we were, we were writing inside of an HTML file and saving from our IDE. And then on the, on the same page, it shows the rendered version. So this is what would be shown in the browser window uh, when you're displaying the page. So this is a, a really sweet tool where now I can add some code, change the code, and click run. I really think this should say render, and you'll see 
the update that you made to the source code rendered on the right side. To me, development is all about practicing. I mean, we could spend hours going through a PowerPoint that shows code examples where I talk about the code examples for hours and hours, but until you practice it, like any skill you're going to learn, to me, coding is the same. You need to practice it on your own. So uh, at home, hopefully, you're going to work through these W3 examples. Look at all of these concepts are all of the concepts we're going to go through in our book during the class. And I will reference these at every opportunity that I can for you guys to go through and try. Um, so let me show you one other thing you can do with these. So let's go through let's go through the introduction really quick. So what is HTML? It stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's not the only markup language out there, and it certainly wasn't the first. It's based on something called SGML, which a lot of different languages are based on. Uh, it is the standard markup for creating web pages. You guys are lucky if you're just learning HTML for the first time because the standards for HTML years ago were based on different versions and for a long time it was based on 4.01 and XHTML 1.0 which I think was a little over complicated and the, really the goal of HTML5 was to bring HTML, CSS and JavaScript together and simplify things and I think they've really done a great job of it. Uh, so HTML is what describes the structure. Again, we'll add style to it using CSS and we'll make it dynamic using JavaScript. This, co this course tip, uh, primarily covers HTML and CSS. There are a series of elements. So once we kind of get the hang of creating a basic HTML page, then it's really just a matter of playing around with the elements to learn what they do. Uh, it tells the browser how to display content. So here's a really great thing that we can do is, if you find an example that's very similar to what you need to do for your labs or some project that you're working on, you can click on the try it yourself, copy all of the code, put that into your IDE, save it, and you'll have a great place to start from for your work. So this is exactly what was in the W3 Schools example. It is a full working web page. If you use the example before clicking try it, sometimes it's not a full example. So it's better to click the try it and get the, get the uh, full source code from the left hand side of the page. Okay, so um, that's it for uh, lesson one. Uh, so make sure that you uh, understand how to create an IDE. You'll, you'll see in the book that it covers brackets and on W3 Schools it, it covers Notepad and TextEdit. Uh, and I'm going to recommend that you use Visual Studio Code as opposed to those. And um, if, you, if you need support, feel free to email me and I'll try to help you through it.